Hey, what's up guys? So today I thought I would show you how I manage all my footage and how I import it into my hard drives and and how I start a project and the settings I use. I think it's very important to have a process because it speeds up your workflow. So we're going to take a look in a little bit how I do all of that. Um, but first of all, I think I think it's important to have the uh, right memory cards because I used to have a lot of memory cards which I no longer use and some of them I've given away because they can't handle 4K footage or they can't even record in uh, in HD. So the th this is the card that right now that I'm using a lot. Let me see if you can focus in on that. Oh, that one, the Transcend 64 gigabytes. And I really like this card because it hasn't given me any problems. I also have, let me take a look here. Um, I bought a a Samsung 32 a gigabyte pro plus uh, class 10 U3, which is recording right now on this camera. And the reason I don't like this card as much is because I was doing a client shoot. It, it was a about a 38 minute uh, interview. And what I saw was that the card was making a new clip every 10 minutes and 45 seconds or so. So instead of having one big clip or one 37 minute uh, clip interview, I ended up with four and I'll tell you why. So the first two were partitioned on their own, 10 minutes and 45 seconds. And then my Sony a6300 stops recording around the 30 minute mark. So I had to click record again uh, to start the recording again. So I ended up with four clips instead of just two. Um, so I don't like that, especially because I was shooting HD. I haven't tested out this card shooting at 4K for longer than 15 or 20 or 30 minutes. So that's another test I have to run, but I don't like that. So this card, the Transcend has not given me that problem. So um, I would highly recommend this card. Um, anyways, let's jump over to the computer and show you how I transfer this uh, footage. Here we have my 64 gigabyte card. I'm gonna open this and if you never seen uh, how Sony makes their uh, files. It's a little bit different from Canon. So you go to private and for root clip, and usually you have XML files along with every video clip, which is very annoying that that uh, Sony does this to us. I don't never, I've never used those XML files. I already deleted them. I don't need them. So I just get rid of them. The other thing that I use is this lazy, 500 gigabyte um, drive and it's supposed to be very fast for editing. This is what I use. This is what I transfer my data to. So uh, before I used to put all, of, I used to create a folder here in my, in my desktop, name it, uh, you know, <laughs> whatever. And then I would dump all of my footage into this folder and I would, all my media would go in here, but I saw that what this did, it was quickly filling up my, my, my drive on my actual laptop. And I don't, this is not good to do because you're having to constantly delete stuff off of your laptop. And if anything deletes by accident or there's a data corruption, you don't want it to have a, you don't want to have it on your laptop. So as you can see, let me show you this SSD is only 120 gigabytes and which is not very big. I would recommend that if you're going to buy an SSD, buy it, uh, buy a bigger one than 120 gig. I wasn't thinking so much about data usage when I first bought this drive and I installed it on my laptop. Uh, I wish I had invested more money, but at the time I wasn't thinking so much about, uh, handling 4k footage, but it is, uh, a good investment to invest in an SSD drive because it speeds up your editing process. Um, so as you can see here, this is a fairly old computer. I'm not thinking so much about adding another SSD. I, I might actually buy a new computer if I ever upgrade anything. And also this having 16 gigabytes of RAM memory helps up, helps speed up the editing process. So think about that whenever you're buying or upgrading, um, your memory cards or the RAM on, on your laptop or your computer. Now I'm going to plug this this lazy drive into my computer so we can start the uh, transfer process of this footage. 
Okay, so here's my lazy drive. I partition it into two sections. One is for Windows, um, because sometimes if you partition it for Mac, if you plug this drive into a Windows computer, it might not work. So I created a, a little partition for if I ever need to transfer stuff into a, a PC or something like that. So um, this is the main drive, lazy. And what I'm going to do is create a new folder. I'm going to call it um, now, I guess. And I'm going to transfer this these uh, four clips into this folder. Hold on. Oh, my computer went wacky. Okay. So I'm going to transfer these. Something happened there. Hold on. I'm going to transfer these four video clips into my now folder. And as you can see there, I have other projects I'm working on or that I've worked on. Usually what I do is after I'm done with the project, I either transfer some of that footage if I want to keep it or I delete the project. So right now I am just deleting all the project files and the footage I shot because I don't have the storage uh, to keep everything. So I just keep the final piece of the final uh, video clip. So this I might get rid of after I have an, uh, after my space gets filled up in this 500 gigabyte uh, uh, lazy drive. So. Now that I have this imported, I'm going to open up Final Cut Pro. I'm going to go to File, New, and create a new library. And I'm going to put this under in my lazy drive in the file I created called Now. And I'm going to name the, the project, the, the library Now. I'm going to click Save. And the next thing is I'm going to create a new project. I keep everything here the same. I'm going to name the project now. And then you got to be careful here because sometimes this might default to 4K. If you shot your footage or the footage is in 4K, it might default to 4K. Usually I shoot in 4K, but I export in 1080p just to save space and time. Um, so just get, you just have to be careful that you have this set to the right um, settings. And I keep it at I shoot at 24 frames per second, so I keep this the same. And click OK. And you can always check the settings again, or you can modify it. If you select the project file, click Modify. You can always change it if you make a mistake. Um, now let me look at my Now folder. You can also change where you store your media, your cache, your backups. Instead of having it on your laptop or your computer, you can uh, store these in another drive if you want to do that. And I've heard that it speeds up your editing process and the amount of time it takes to edit and to render out footage. Um, I don't do that, but uh, in the future, if I buy more drives, I might end up doing something like that. Okay, so to import data, command I, Go to the lazy drive. Now, we just hit the net, um, click on, or just click on now, and it will import everything that's that's in the now folder. So that's pretty much my my wor workflow to edit and get everything in. The next thing I do is once I import my footage, I go to uh, the preferences. Go to, click on Final Cut Pro preferences and I turn off this background render. I don't turn it on unless I really need it. If for some reason I did an effect and I'm not getting a, a real good playback, then I might just render it out to see how it looks. Otherwise, I only turn this on after I'm totally finished with all the editing and I know that the project looks pretty much how I want it to look. Then I come back in here and I turn on the background render and I just walk away and I let it render and after that I, I play it back to, to look that to look uh, at the final piece and make sure everything's in, is in place and then nothing looks um, out of order or that everything looks right and um, so this helps me save time because if I had the background render on all the time 
um, I might import all this footage in here. And as I'm working, this will, in the background, the rendering will be going on. And I don't want that. I want to save as much as uh, the working memory as I can and just reserve it to the very end. So that, that's helped me edit faster. And I don't really think you need to render out anything until the end, unless you really need to. But for the most part, I don't think you do. Okay, so that's helped me also when I import uh, footage, I let it um, tra do the transcoding and analysis at the beginning, or sometimes I might just start right away. But these are fairly small files, so I can get started right away. Okay, so that's basically the whole process of how I take the footage from my card, put it in my computer, or put it in uh, an external drive and edit off of that drive. Like I said, I edited off of this lazy drive, which is supposedly very fast, and that's what's worked for me because I don't like storing stuff on my laptop. So I would suggest that you, you know, you try to keep your laptop or your working computer as, as clean as possible and try to use a fast drive if you can. Um, the SS, the, this lazy drive has worked really great for me. So anyways, I would love to know if you have any questions and if you have any suggestions, I'm always open to learn and to do things differently and, and learn from this process. So um, if anything you want to share, go ahead and do so in the comment section. I hope you found this useful and I'm pretty sure I covered everything I wanted to cover. So I'll see you guys on the next video.